Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will be seeing how to create a PCG linear graphs. You can have like something like this, like a set of walls and like windows and doors in the middle. And I'll be showing you all how to manipulate the walls. Like if you want just the walls or probably something like this where you have a wall a door right in the center and walls all around so yeah we can go on and on with these options something like this where, for example where you have a door at the ends and the center if you want we can remove the center as well like this one where so yes, we'll be going through PCG linear grammar and we'll be exploring the possibilities. And yeah, huge shout out to Unreal for upping the game with PCG and bringing this tool out. So yeah, make sure to like and yeah, do subscribe if you learn something. And let's dive into the video. All right, so let's begin. First things first, uh, you need to have Unreal Engine 5.7 installed and after that I uh, need you guys to enable the PCG plugin. So once you have the plugin enabled uh, you will see this new tab over here called PCG. You can access it from here. If you can't see that use the keyboard shortcut of shift plus 9 to access this. All right. Once we are here, uh, you'll find this option to draw spline, which is what we will be using for this specific tutorial. So let's start. So I'll go with this tool. So basically, you can draw a spline. That is pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to edit, if you if you come down to the bottom, you have these options for your spacing. Make sure whenever you edit, you'll have to draw the spline again. Right now, I want the spacing to be a bit larger. There are other modes. If you don't like this mode, you can always do the tangent mode. So this is your usual spline mode. Uh, but I'll keep it free draw and all right, just something like that. Okay, so next thing you have these three variants which you can use one is the spacing tool, uh, which is pretty straightforward. Next one is the linear grammar tool, which was what. I want to use in this tutorial so let's go ahead and do that so what is linear grammar it basically uses a set of strings to determine how is basically the order of your meshes or the formation of your meshes so once you go to linear grammar tool enable grammar click on modules and I'll just add a mesh for now. I'll just add this default mesh. As you can see, the orientation is meshed up. I'll do the forward axis to Y. And if you hover over your object, you can see the proc size. So for Y, it is 316. So I'll keep that. If you are seeing some gaps, probably reduce the size. I'll do 310, 9, yeah. Probably something like this. This is good enough. Okay. So, now, inside your grammar tab, you'll see this A 
asterisk which means it is telling a node to continuously fill it with asterisk with the a symbol which is this one if i remove the asterisk and press enter it will just create a one long thing and if i uh, deselect scalable it just creates one mesh if i type a comma a that means it's two of them same thing a comma a comma a it's three so now what do we want to do uh, there's much we can do with just one let's add another module and now let's select probably this one for module b i'll keep the size same also the forward axis to y now if i do a comma b nothing happens because you, we haven't defined the symbol for this one yet so i put it b now you'll see it summons a once and then b if we do a comma b star or b asterisk you'll see it will summon a as first and then lots of b's you can also put a comma and type a you can see the first and last it summons a and rest all will be b so you can see see that pretty good now i'll accept this and i'll just details if you come to pcg and clear pcg now this is saved now let's go to pcg mode again we'll draw a new spline let's draw it over here let's i'll just add these again like this one 300 and 303 for axis y scalable and one more let's add the door all right like b perfect so now we learned how to add let's say between them now let's do the complete opposite so if i type a star it will summon all of b if i add a comma and type b it will summon b at the end now if i add another comma and type a star here you will see it automatically summons b at the center so if i drag it and you can see b is always the center mesh if it's just single mesh it will only summon b and if it's three it will summon b as the center pretty cool now what if we want to add one more module so now i'll add the windows i'm pretty sure is the same scale and make this c now just in the center type c comma b comma c all right something is weird that is because let's type it 
inside the bracket. Okay, this doesn't work this way. Let me just figure out the exact code. All right, I think uh, this thing was accurate. It's just the pivot for this was a bit different. I'm probably pretty sure that's why it didn't work. I'll just replace the mesh with something else for now. And I'm pretty sure. Let's see. you see it's working fine so you have B C, E in the center like if you want you can add C at the starts and ends as well so you'll have two windows and you can now go on and create your own structure. So probably, probably something like this is what I like. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give a like and let me know what you guys want to see next.